Hello. Welcome back to, I'm going to start calling it Soul Aligned Self-Care instead of Self-Care Sunday because I'm doing it on Wednesdays now and that seems, it seems a little weird to say Self-Care Sunday. It just feels weird. So welcome to part two. I don't really want to number the, the parts because like I said, each, each, um, each week, I'm, I'm going, uh, this is the second part of the Unstuck, Get Unstuck series, okay? But each week, I'm going to be covering a topic that um, stands alone. So you can benefit from just watching the one, or you could just watch the whole series. But it's going to be like a big series. It's going to probably go into November. So I don't want people to feel like they have to, in order to benefit from it, they have to watch the whole thing. You don't. You could benefit from watching the individual series. So... For today, we're talking about protecting your energy and vibrating higher. And um, so grab your coffee. I got my coffee. Mm. So I got this mug. Okay. I got this mug. Isn't it pretty? From a place in New York. It's called... Oh, no. That's not the name of the place. I can't remember what the place is, but they make them in Italy. And during the pandemic, they closed because they didn't have a warehouse and they couldn't continue to like get the stuff from Italy and they never reopened it. It was like, it was a little pricey, um, but it was like my favorite place and I'm so bummed about it because I have like three or four cups and my daughter who lives in New York used to buy them for me every once in a while. And so now I like treasure them so much that if I ever broke one, I'd be so upset. <laughs> okay, so. Anyway, when I do this series, just so you know, I always write a blog post, I do a live on the same topic, and then I do a podcast. And I do this because everybody has a different way where they like to consume like any type of media. And so some people want to read, some people don't want to read, some people like video, and then some people just want to listen. And um, I like I don't like to read a lot. I'm very impatient. So like, unless somebody writes a certain way, like with a lot of, you know, like bold print and bullet points. <laughs> I'm one of those people. Um, I don't like to read it. So I'd rather um, actually listen to something so I don't have to like really pay attention. So I love podcasts. So I do it all three ways just in case you want to consume it in a different way. So this is only one of the ways that I give you this information. And if you're on my email list once a week, you'll get a, an email. I've consolidated my emails down into one. So I'm not, I feel, I felt for a while like I was emailing people like every day and it felt like a lot. And so um, I put the blog post and the live and anything else I have to say for the week in this one email that I'm kind of calling a newsletter. And then the, the podcast gets released on Fridays and I send out another email. So um, at most, I'm sending two or three emails a week. So if you're on the email list, you will get all this information. If you're not and you want to get it, get on the email list. Just go to my website and you could do it there. It's really, it's really super easy to get on. So with that said, I'm going to get started. And I have my notes here, so don't mind me if I look at it like I'm not looking at you because it's, I like to read my notes and keep myself on track because otherwise I tend to like babble a little bit. So let's get started. So um, last week we talked about core values. So in order to start to dream big and be able to, you know, bring these dreams into our reality, we need to get aligned with them. Um, so last week we talked about our core values and this is about really getting down to the nitty gritty and reconnecting with yourself and knowing what you stand for, knowing what your core values are. Um, but and also knowing where you want to focus your energy. So if like you don't really know what your values are and you haven't really like thought about it for a really long time, this is a really good exercise to do because this is how you can get aligned with, with your values. And when you get aligned with your values, it, you could very quickly bring your dreams and your goals into fruition because you're aligned with them. Now, if you haven't done this, that's fine, but you can go back and either listen to the podcast or you could read last week's blog post, however you want to do it. But if you haven't done that and you're like, well, Tina, I know my values. I know what, I know what's important to me. Well, then that's great. Um, then you don't need to do this, but um, it would be, it's a good exercise to do. And also I'm doing a free workshop next week where I kind of go into this. So instead of, I'm going to sneeze, excuse me for instead of um, 
listening to the podcast, whatever, if you want to join me and do this workshop. Originally, it was going to be live only, but I'm getting like just a lot of people that can't do it. At, I think I had it at two o'clock in the afternoon next Wednesday. Um, so a lot of people can't be there just because of work and stuff like that. And I can't do it later on in the evening. And it's mostly because later on in the evening, I'm just not, I'm just not on. I'm just off. I like, I don't, I don't do live well after five o'clock. I don't know why. I don't, I don't do coaching appointments after this time. And so I really want to bring my best self to this workshop so I could help people. And so I like to do it in the afternoon. So I'm going to do a recording. So even if you can't make it, you can get the recording. So if you're interested in doing the core values and you really want to like get deep down into it, just sign up um, for the wait list for the core values workshop. I'll send you the Zoom link and then, you know, you'll be on the email list then and you'll get the copy of the replay if you can't make it. So that's how you could get that. So um, we do this um, getting uh, getting into the right vibration. We do this by putting ourselves in the right environment and surrounding ourselves with positive influences and people and, you know, really taking into consideration the media we're consuming or anything we're consuming, like um you know, music, what are we watching on TV? Who are the people that are surrounding? What is my environment like? What is my home like? Do I feel comfortable? Do I feel um, happy? You know, does this person drain me? So it's, it's really about taking a look at all that stuff. So everybody's an individual. Um, everybody has their own loves and their dislikes. And this can be very personal, right? So you need to learn what works for you and then adjust it, you know, like, adjust it like to make it it's like you have to constantly check in with yourself in order to know what what you're vibing with so I, I posted a quote today and it's like if it doesn't feel right to you then honor that like there's a reason it doesn't feel right so just honor that so when you learn how to do this and you make it a habit this is when you feel more in flow this is when um, you're really connected with your soul and you automatically draw into your life the things that you want and you love Okay, and I feel like that's what everybody wants, right? It, it's uh, it gets to be easy. It sounds too easy, right? But it's really simple, but it's not always easy, okay? Because the way that most of us live, um, this we have this strong societal expectations. There's demands we think we need to live into, right? We we actually create some of those expectations, but there is a strong societal expectation where. We're expected to do this because this is normal. You know, we're expected to get the, go to college, get the job, retire and do whatever, like have kids. I'm sorry, I forgot that part. You know, <laughs> you know there's like this expectation and in order to be viewed as a good, hardworking person, right? And th this is just, uh, this is a model that's created by God. I don't even know freaking who created this, but it's horrible. So. If, and if hardworking was a trait that was needed to be happy and abundant, then the world would be a different place, right? Because everybody that works really hard, like the construction worker, the teacher, the nurse, you know, I don't, I don't want to like leave anybody out, but seriously, like restaurant workers, like some of the hardest working people make the least amount of money and have the least amount of time and abundance and happiness. So it's like, so the world would be a different place if all it took was hard work, right? We also know that in our souls that when we take care of ourselves at a high level, um, then we feel better. And then we're able to put our best selves into the world and we're able to like take care of the people we love. We're able to help others, love others. And we know this to our core. Everybody knows it. Like you feel so good when you take care of yourself, right? But this is also not what is socially acceptable. And being accepted by our peers can be very important to many of us. As a matter of fact, it's, it's like a basic human need is to be accepted and be a part of a community. So it could, be, it could be scary to kind of shift out of that assumed acceptable path and carve out a new and improved one for yourself that could be very different and not like accepted by like our culture, if you want to call it that. So um, I'm here to tell you that this is shifting. Like obviously you're here, right? Um, being accepted, I'm sorry, um, more people like you are stepping outside of the box and, and learning to create their own, their own way, their own path. 
and more people are less afraid to do this more people and i think there's like this push and pull there's this point that you get to where you're so freaking miserable that you have to change something and that's what this series is about it's about getting unstuck a lot of people feel really stuck because what they're doing right now doesn't work it's horrible right and they need to change something um so getting aligned uh, is how you begin to do this getting aligned protecting your energy um and and the way i do this for myself um is i look at all the different areas of my life and i kind of do an audit and this is not the same as the balance sheet that we did last week it's just a little bit different it's kind of really um, looking at what you're exposing yourself to and what you're allowing into your like your energy field so like that's why I said protecting your energy raising your vibration your vibration automatically raises when you're doing the things that protect your energy so it's just like it's it's a one-two kind of a thing they're both related so as soon as you really start to consciously pay attention to what you're surrounding yourself with and um, what you're allowing into your um, you know, into your life, like picture this as like, you have like this, this whole vibrating bubble around you. Okay. And that's your vibration. And it goes out. I don't know how far, like say it's, I think it's like, like, uh, when they do like the heart math thing, I think it's like eight feet or something like that. But this is imagine this big bu bubble around you and you have this certain vibration, this certain energy, you know, how certain people have certain energies you know you walk into a room and you could feel the energy in the room and it's because of what people are in the room what's going on what they're talking about right so you have this energy and you have a choice of what you can allow into your energy field and what and what you can expose yourself to so what people are you spending time with and what what kind of music are you listening to what books are you reading what movies are you watching um what is, what is, what do, how do you decorate your house? Is your house cluttered? Is, is there space cluttered? Is your car space cluttered? Is everything cluttered? Like everything's a mess, right? So like these are the things that affect your energy. So what I do is I look at all the different areas of my life, like the areas we talked about last week. So like health, fitness, home environment, relationships, career, money. Um, let's see, let me look at my list. Self-improvement, social life, self-care, right? All these areas, right? And then ask yourself questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you some of the questions that I ask myself and you can come up with your own answers. So this would be definitely a journaling activity. So if you want, you can get a pen and paper now and you can write this down or you can come back to it or you can go to the blog post where everything's written out. All the questions are written out for you in the blog post, which will be in that email I talked about. So for health, health is really important to me because um, a lot of you know that I had a stroke when I was 39 that was caused by extreme stress. I was under a lot of stress for many years, um, like just unbelievable stress. Like a lot of my hair fell out. It was just unbelievable stress. And I wasn't very good at self-care at that time. So I wasn't really taking care of myself in that way. But I was like in really, I was in good shape. I was in the best shape of my life because I was using exercise to try to release stress, which I've learned recently doesn't always release the right kind of stress, you know? And I was also eating pretty good. I never really ate terrible. Um, I didn't drink a lot at the time, as a matter of fact. For all of my 30s and part of, yeah, all of my 30s, I, I didn't drink at all. Like, I, I had like three kids. I was, I just didn't drink. I don't know. I just didn't drink at all. So I was in really good health, but I still had a stroke and this is because I was so stressed out, right? So health is so important to me. So some of the questions, how can I eat better? How can I include stuff in my diet that serves my body and doesn't take away from it? Doesn't put my body into a state of disease. Like, um, how can I control my exposure to toxins? This is like, a, this is a big topic that's coming up today because all the exposure that we have to all these different toxins which we can't control completely so don't drive yourself freaking crazy doing this but you can't control it completely but you can do your best right so how can i help control this how can i control my stress what works for me um how can i rest more okay what am i doing in this area to raise my vibration what am i eating did you know that actual fruit vegetables grains have a higher vibration than like processed food 
it's just, and, and so when you're consuming this stuff, you're automatically raising your vibration. So if you want a really quick way to raise your vibration, eat a really healthy meal. Okay, fitness. Fitness is also very important to me. The, you, those of you who know me know that I'm a big time runner, um, big time yoga person. Um, I try to lift weights. It's not my favorite thing to do, but I do do it because I know it's important at my age. So how can I move daily and love what I'm doing? So this is so important because if you absolutely hate what you're doing, it's going to be so hard to do it. So like, how can I learn to love to move daily? Like, what do, what do you like? I love hiking. I'm going on a hike right after this. I'm going on a hike. Um, I love yoga. I love running. It's, I don't know, fitness comes easy. But like, if it doesn't come easy for you, like, what can you do to make it better? Can you like include a friend? Will that make it easier for you to get it done? You know, like just... Do something that's fun. You don't always have to just go to the gym. I, I never liked going to the gym. Not that I think the gym's bad or anything like that. I just never vibed with it. It just never worked for me. Um, next is home environment. I find this to be so important for me. Like I said, everybody's different. So like, is your space cluttered? Um, how do my surroundings make me feel? Um, and what space, having your space cluttered would mean like, is it a mess? Is it like all your drawers are a mess? You don't know where anything is. You can't find stuff. Everything takes longer to do because everything's a mess. That really affects your your vibe. And I can, I can explain how much this affects me. So this might not affect everybody this way, but if I don't do the dishes the night before and I wake up and there's dishes in the sink, I automatically feel shitty. Like it automatically kind of like brings me down a level. So I'll do... It's so important. I know how important it is for me to do my dishes so that my next morning starts out better. So that's one. That's how much that affects me. Um, okay. Uh, do you have beautiful things that you view as beautiful in your environment? Um, how can you add comfort? Do you feel safe in your environment? Is the person you live with supportive and kind? Oops, sorry about that. Why is it going off? I have my sound off. Let, hold on. Let me just make sure my sound... My sound isn't off, it's on, okay. Well, that doesn't happen too often. I usually always have my sound off. I apologize for that. Um, next up is relationships. So this is a huge one too. So this is like your significant other, your friends, your family. Do they support you? Are they positive people? Are they mutually, is, is, are these relationships mutually su supportive, meaning you're giving, they're giving, you're both getting something out of it. It's not like a one way, way relationship. Does this person drain you or energize you? Pay attention to how people feel in your life and then try to figure out how you can change that if it's a negative, okay? What kind of people do you surround yourself with? Um, you know how they say like you're a product of the, the five people you hang out with the most? I don't know if I believe that, but I do believe that it has a big effect on you. Um, let me see, can I be 100% myself around these people? This is so important. Do you feel you have to change the way you act or the things you say in order to not upset somebody else or be judged or you think you're going to, or you think you're going to be judged by them? Um, do they know you and accept you exactly how you are? This is really important. Okay. Moving into career. Do I like what I do? Do I feel inspired? Can I support myself? Is my work environment good for me? And does it challenge me? Some people need to be challenged. Okay. Some people don't. Some people want to go to work and they want it to just, they just want to walk away from it and go home. That it's, there's really no right or wrong here. Like some people want more than something like that, but some people are very happy with that. And that's what really serves them. And that's what I mean by everybody's wants and loves and dislikes are going to be different. Money. Do I make enough money to feel comfortable? Do I feel secure and safe? Okay. That's a really simple one. I'm not going to talk about debt or saving because I don't necessarily think that debt is bad. It's just a way for you to get something that you wanted quicker, you know, or, you know, it's just, it, I don't think it's bad. I just don't, that most people have debt and I don't think we should view it as bad. Um, and as far as saving, it's really what you vibe with the most. Um, do I think people should save money? Yeah. Do I think they should save money to the point where they're miserable in their life? No, absolutely not. Okay. So I could talk about that for a long time, but really it's about, do I make enough money and I feel, do I feel comfortable, safe and secure, right? Spirituality. Do I feel connected with a higher power that supports me? 
do um, I take the time to support myself here? Do I take the time to focus on that maybe whatever that time period is, whether you believe in a certain God or whether you're just consider yourself a spiritual person, whatever that might be, do you take the time to connect with your, whatever your source is, okay? Um, Self-improvement. Do I like to learn new things? So most people, most humans, it's like human nature, want to learn more. They want to move forward. It's a continuous thing. As soon as they get to where they want to go, they want something different. This is just normal. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just normal. So do you start, do you focus on learning new things? Do you read books? Do you take courses? Do you feel inspired to always be learning, to always be bettering yourself, even as you accept who you are in this moment, right? So are you spreading your wings constantly, right? I, fi I feel like for me, this is really important. Those of you who know me know I'm a huge book person. I have a book club. Some of you might know that. It's a very cool book club where we read self-improvement books. And that that's always in the newsletter. So when we start talking about whatever the book pick will be for the month, I talk about that in the newsletter. Uh, social life, okay? Do you get to go out with friends and family and have fun? Do you surround yourself with positive people, experiences? Um, what kind of media do you consume? This is so important. What kind of music? Like... Do you go on like social media apps like Facebook or TikTok or Instagram or whatever and do you feel negative? Do you feel positive? Is it a good thing? Like follow people that add. If, some, if something like rubs you the wrong way or triggers you, just unfollow or block or whatever you want to do. Like this is, you have control over the media you consume. Um, watching the news. I do not watch the news. I get my news from the silliest sources because I um, I believe most news channels are really, really negative and it makes me feel negative. It makes me feel uncomfortable. And for those of you who think you're going to miss something or something's going to happen and you're not going to be cued in, you won't miss a thing. Believe me, somebody will tell you. You'll hear it somewhere, somehow. Um, but not tuning into the news, I think for probably 99% of all people is a positive thing. So, <laughs> especially today. Um, what else? Let's see. Uh, what kind of music? This is important. Like, are you listening to high vibe music? Or are you listening to some, like, something that makes you angry or something that is angry? Like, do you get out in nature enough? Are you exposing yourself to nature? Do you expose yourself to different people and different cultures? Do you open yourself up and to learn more? Um, then moving into self-care, what do you do to reduce stress? What did you do to take care of yourself at a high level? How do you recharge? Everybody's different. You know, like for me going into my garden, that recharges me. Running recharges me. Some people hate running. Like that doesn't recharge them. It's like the worst thing they can possibly imagine, right? So everybody is different. What may, helps you recharge? Pay attention. That's what this live is about. It's about paying attention to the vibration you get from things, the feeling you get, whatever you want to call it, that feeling. How does this person make you feel? How does this place make you feel? How does your job make you feel? How can you change that to make it more positive if it's not a positive thing? Um, this is a lot, right? Like going into each one of these areas and trying to figure all this stuff out is a lot. But what I could tell you is Pick one area that you really want to focus on. It doesn't have to be like your shittiest area or anything like that. It could just be something that you really want to focus on. Like, so maybe you want to focus on your relationships or maybe you want to focus on your career. Then go into that area and dig deep and figure out how to surround yourself with positive things to raise your, to raise your vibration, to make it a more positive experience, okay? You'll be happier. You'll be more in flow, like I said before. Um, this is... Even though it seems like a lot, it shouldn't, the way it really should be is this This should come first. Taking care of yourself and really tuning in to your vibration, your intuition, how things affect you in your life. It should be, that should come first. That should always come first before you're doing anything else. And like I said earlier, when I first started talking, this is not socially acceptable for most people. Most people consider this to be selfish, you know, putting yourself first. But um, if you really think about it, and I'm going to repeat this because I, I did say this at the beginning, the better you take care of yourself, 
if you take care of yourself at the highest level, not only do we teach people how to treat us, not only do we teach people what's acceptable to allow into our space, but we also get to put our best self forward for the people that we love. We get to put our best self forward for our kids, for our partners, for our career, whatever that might be, for our volunteer work, for whatever we're doing, whatever we're putting, whatever we're creating in the world, whatever we're putting into the world. So we know this. I'm not telling you something new. Most people know that when they take care of themselves, they feel better. When they feel better, everything's better. So that's the way it should be. The societal norm is ass backwards, if you ask me. So um, that's why I teach this stuff. This is That's why I get into this. So um, one way that you can do this, I'm going to give you a tool that I use in some of my courses and some of my private work that I do. So I'm going to share this tool with you. I don't, I'm not giving you the actual worksheet, um, but I will tell you how it works. And it's called the not to do list. And the way this works is there's three columns. So you could just write on a piece of paper and make three columns. And you, one of them is ditch, delegate, and do. Okay. And you go into every area of your life. And if it's something that you don't want to do, something you don't want to experience or a person you don't want to spend time with, then ditch it, okay? Now, if it's something or maybe someone that you can't just ditch, then um, can you delegate it? Is it an activity that you can delegate? Is it, is it, can somebody else spend time with this person? Do you have to spend time with this person? Um, if it is a person, this is where it gets a little tricky. This could be a place where you need to set a boundary or you need to spend less time with that person. Okay. So delegate, delegate can also look like having someone clean your house, um, uh, buying a meal service. Delegating can look like hiring someone in your business. Delegating can look like having someone walk your dog. So you're not work worried about getting home late and you could focus on what you're doing. Um, that's what delegating can look like. Another way thing that delegating can look like if you're a caretaker for a person, having another person come in and be that share that responsibility with you and your family. That could be delegating. Even if it's not getting rid of the whole activity, it's giving yourself a break. This is not about being perfect. This is about making progress. And then last, if it's something good that you like, then it goes in the do column. And what's really cool about this, this um, tool What's really, and I really suggest you do it. Do it in at least one area because it's, it's freaking infectious, I'll tell you. When you do this activity, you'll be amazed how much freaking time you spend with people you dislike doing activities you hate, okay? Um, it's, we don't even realize it because there's these expectations and we place a lot of these expectations on ourselves. We want to look a certain way. We don't want to upset people. We don't want to be um, rejected by our community, right? So we put a lot of these ex expectations on ourselves. So this really is bringing awareness to where you're spending your time. And sometimes for some people, it's a real awakening. It could be a real wake up call. And you could really pay attention um, to being more intentional about your time. Where are you spending your time? Okay, so if you go into, say, um, your health, for instance, this could be really simple. Go into your health um, and say, ditch, delegate, do. What can I ditch? I could ditch the sugar. What can I delegate? Well, I want to eat healthy. I want to eat a plant-based whole food diet, but I don't want to be in the kitchen all the time. How can I delegate that? Well, you can delegate that by meal planning at the beginning of the week. You could delegate that by... Um, ordering a meal service. You could delegate that by um, getting help from other family members if they're a part of this and they want to do it too. That's where you could delegate it. Um, uh, something else, let me think, health-wise, stress. Okay, what really stresses me out? Well, it stresses me out when I sometimes have to work late and um, my dog needs to be let out and I can't do it. So maybe just hiring somebody to come and walk your dog every day at five o'clock and, and feed the dog, walk the dog every day at five o'clock so that you don't have to stress about this and then you can just come home and enjoy, you know, where you're at. You don't have to worry about being late and having the dog have an accident or worry about the dog being by itself or being hungry or whatever. 
um, there's so many different, and you know, there's so many different things that you can delegate. And you say, you might say, Tina, I don't have money to hire a dog sitter or a meal service. Yeah, I I totally get that. I've totally been there. Um, but there's other way to other ways to do things like that. Like have one of your kids do that after school, or your significant other maybe um, talk to your significant other or your partner or somebody that you might live with and say, listen, can you let the dog out on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and I'll do Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then make sure that you're you know on time those times. Whatever. Like there's different ways to delegate things. Um, there's and there's different ways to ease your way out of things. So like that might not be perfect. You might not be, you know, like you might be stressed out on Tuesdays and Thursdays because, you know, you can't get home or whatever, but um, it's it's an improvement and that's what this is about. It's not about perfection. So you also might be saying like, I can't ditch or delegate my mother-in-law, Tina. Like I don't want to <laughs> spend time with her. Um, so whatever's going on with some, time, some kind of a relationship that might be stressful for you you could either set boundaries which is difficult it's not easy but that's how you resolve that's how you create space for yourself right so sometimes you have to do hard things to make things easier so that's setting a boundary or just spending less time with that person right having a conversation with that person that might be impossible like believe me i have people in my life that are impossible like that and i understand it so how can i spend less time with that person how can I resolve this or how can I set a boundary, right? So that's that's how you deal with that situation. So while the not to, the not to do list isn't like a perfect, you know, solution to every problem, it's a way to bring awareness. That's what it's really for. It's it's supposed to bring awareness into your life and how you're spending your time. It's just like the balance sheet. That's supposed to bring awareness to where you're not really happy in your life because we're on like like I say, I always say you're on the hamster wheel of life. You you know, you're going along. Do you ever watch a hamster on a hamster wheel? That's why I always use that metaphor. Because they're not paying attention to anything around them. They're super uber focused. They're going straight ahead and they're just going, 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 going. And that's how a lot of us live our lives. And it's not, um, it's not anyone's fault or anything. That's just all these expectations, all this busyness, all the things we have to do. You know, so we're not paying attention to what brings us joy and what doesn't. We're not paying attention to being intentional about our time and our big dreams and our big goals because we have no freaking time to even think about it, right? That's what this, that's what these, this series is about. It's about really getting in touch with yourself and taking these little moments that don't really take a lot of time. This doesn't take a lot of time. And um, I don't know about you, but I don't want to get to the end of my life and look back and say, boy, I did a lot of shit for other people that I didn't like and I didn't really enjoy myself. I'd rather say, I protected my energy, right? I lived a high vibe life. I worked my way towards my dreams and goals and I lived an amazing life and I was happy, right? And the people around me were happy because I was happy. And because I was happy, I that, that was contagious. That vibration is contagious, right? So that's what, the, that's what it's about. Okay, let me just check my notes here and see where I am. I'm, I started ranting. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so like I, I, I did say, going through this work might seem like overwhelming, um, especially if you're not having like a great life right now and you feel like you have a lot of work to do. But my, my advice is to really like start small, you know, start in one area and just do one thing at a time. And, you know, be sure that you celebrate yourself because um, if you don't stop and really look at what you're doing, like you're doing more right now just watching this. You're, you've decided... I am sick of being stuck. I'm sick of being miserable. I, I got to do something. And I'm hoping that out of all this series, because like I said, it's going to go well into like November, that there's something that clicks with you. That's something that works for you. Maybe all of it, maybe just some of it. Take what resonates with you and leave the rest behind. But you're ahead of the average person because you're trying. You're, you're taking a deep breath and you're saying, what? How can I make how can I make my life better? How can I make this a better experience for myself? So um, when you do this work, like I said earlier, it's infectious because you'll you'll do this work in one area. So like pick that one area, do the work in this one area, figure out how you're spending your time, and then be more intentional about what you're exposing yourself to and what you're allowing into that, just that one area. Because it's so infectious once you repair one thing that you're just gonna want to do more. 
and and like I said, be sure to celebrate because that that kind of locks it in. It locks it into your brain that this is this is a good thing. I want to continue. Um, I want to continue doing this, right? I want to continue on and I want to continue feeling good and making this better and better. So make a conscious effort to look around yourself on a daily basis and see what you're surrounding yourself with, who you're surrounding yourself with. Um, what activities are you involved in? And then ask yourself the question, does this serve me and support me? And then, or is this energy, or is this an energy health or well-being sucker? Which one is it? Does it serve me or does it take away? That's, that's, that's a uh, completely simplified version of everything I just babbled about for the past half hour, right? It's just tuning in and asking yourself that question. And I, I teach people to do this when they're talking about food. It's like whenever you put something into your mouth, ask yourself, does this add to my health or does this take away from my health? It's the same thing with your daily life, everything you're exposing yourself to. Does this serve me or does this take away? How does this affect me? How does this affect my energy and how I feel? That's all I'm asking you to do. It's really simple. So let's see. Yeah, okay, so I'm reading my notes. Does this bring me closer to what I want or give me more of the same thing that you don't want, that stuck feeling? So which one is it gonna do? Is it gonna bring you closer to your dreams or is it gonna just keep you more of the same? So. Um, I want to thank you for spending this time with me. I hope that this was helpful to you. Um, do the do the work. Do the not to do list and, and see where you're spending your time. Really make it intentional. Um, and I'll see you next week. I'll be talking more about focusing on what you really want. So we talked about core values. We talked about how to protect your energy and raise your vibration. Now it's about figuring out where you want to go. What are your big dreams and goals? And how can you really like move yourself into that? How can you get um, past any limiting beliefs or blocks that you think you have? So that's gonna be next week because just like I talked about in the beginning, acknowledging your starting point. And if you're, you know, like if you're going somewhere and you're using a GPS, you need the starting address and you need the ending address. So like you need to know what you want. This is a really big, important part. You know what your values are. Now let's connect those to your, your goals and your dreams and so that you can move forward. So I will see you next week. Um, I love you. Also, if you want to do that workshop, I will, I'll put that in the comments. Okay. I'll put the link in the comments. It's next Wednesday. Um, I think it might be the 28th. Let me just look, let me look quick. Cause I was going to do it this week, but I decided to make it next week. Where, where is it? Hold on. Sorry. 28th. Yeah. So it's the 28th at two o'clock, but like I said, I'm going to re be recording it. So if you want to attend, I would love to have you there. It would be so much more powerful if you were there. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do it on Zoom. Um, unless I just get too many people, then I might do it in a Facebook group. I don't know, but you'll you put yourself on the wait list if you're interested and you'll get the link to the to wherever I'm going to go live and do this workshop. And then you'll also get the replay. So if you're interested, the link for the workshop. It's called the Dream Big Workshop. That'll be in the comments. Also, if you're interested in going really deep into this work, I have a six-week six mentorship program. It's called the Life Purpose Mentorship. And I'll put a link to that below. You could, you could sign up for that if you're interested in going deeper and you want more support. Okay. I love you. See you next week. Bye.